there friends and welcome to another free pattern tutorial it's been a little while and I've been missing it so I thought let's do something else and what better thing to use than some leftover fabric from that top well that skirt and top set I made a little bit ago um, the bad rep set by George and Ginger remember I made the uh, the um, tiered skirt, I couldn't think of the word, the tiered skirt. And if you have not checked out that free uh, tutorial, make sure that you go check it out now. I use this beautiful fabric um, from a curtain that I got at the thrift store uh, to make the skirt. And then I also use a t-shirt to make a little fitted tank. So that's a really cool tutorial too. So go check it out now. I'll add a link to it. But um, I decided to go ahead and use that same fabric. I had a little bit left over to create this beautiful, beautiful blouse. This is the O'Neill blouse by Pauline Alice. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but it's gorgeous. And I'll add the link in the information box below so you can go ahead and grab it. You do have to register for an account uh, and then purchase uh, for free this pattern and then you'll be able to download it. It does offer layers, which is a great feature for when um, you can just print your own size. You don't have to print every size. Um, you can print on Ad with Acrobat Reader, Adobe Acrobat Reader. I was trying to say both, both words at the same time. Um, I will show you a little bit on how I piece the pattern together and then cut the fabric and how I sew it. So let's get started. It's so cute. All right, we're gonna get started with this sew. And the first thing is printing your pattern. Now, um, when you go on there to download this pattern, it's gonna ask you for your information. You're gonna create an account. Once you create an account for them, you can go ahead and purchase that pattern for free. Once the pattern is purchased for free, you can go download. Once you download, you're going to uh, follow the instructions on how to print. Um, I usually just print uh, to fit. And then I print this first page and I have a test square. It measures two by two, two inches by two inches, so you wanna make sure that you measure that. And I wanna make sure that I'm using a clear ruler like this. Um, you wanna kind of, or a regular ruler, whatever, but don't a measuring tape sometimes is not the most, uh, the easiest one to measure with because sometimes they can stretch out or whatever. So I like to use a ruler, a hard ruler, to make sure that I get the measurements just right. Once I know that that's just right, I can go ahead and start cutting up my pattern. I mean, piecing my pattern together. I'm gonna use um, a regular scissors. And what the first thing I'm gonna do, this pattern has um, pages that you overlap. So you have these trims right here. So I'm going to start by trimming the top and a left side. So I'm gonna trim right at that line at the top and then at the left. All right, now my favorite thing to use to put my pattern together is to use a disappearing purple um, ink, um, glue stick, because I like to go ahead and be able to just glue them side by side. So now what you gotta do is you match up to that line right there and you start gluing your pattern together. On the right side of the line, and then butt it right up to the line. Now, if you need to see how this is all put together, you can go on your instructions and they usually will have a diagram, but you're just going by the letters, A1, A2, A3. So the next one should be A4. And then, because this one, now every pattern company does it a little bit different. This one does by letter and number, which means that now when I go, the next one that's gonna go down here is gonna be B. I'm going to trim this one out because it's kind of hard to keep all the pages from sliding off. But that one's one in its own, so I'm going to pull it out. All right, so now I'm finished with the A's. And the next one will be starting the B. I'm going to go ahead and put the glue right here at the bottom and match up. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting it all together, and then we'll cut our fabric. One neat thing about this pattern is that it's one of those that comes with layers. Um, I went on my Adobe Acrobat Reader and I was able to print exactly my size. So you go to the left-hand corner um, and you pick layers 
and you can pick your sizes. I measured myself and I measured between two sizes. So I went and printed both sizes. On this one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the larger size and make it a larger size. And then if I feel like it's too big, the next time I make it, I'll trim down to the smaller size. But I'm gonna start with the larger size um, because I wanna make sure that it's going to fit. I can always make a pattern or a top smaller would be easier than having to make it bigger. <laughs> So I'm just gonna cut right at that line of my size. All right, I'm going to be using this leftover shower curtain fabric that I got at a thrift store. I made a um, skirt with this on my last free project. And so today we're going to use the rest of it, try to use the rest of it to make this top. Yeah, I think it'll be good. Okay, so first of all, you got to look at what the pattern pieces say. If you see this little arrow here and it tells you this is the back and you're going to cut on fold, that means that you're going to fold your fabric and where that fold is, is where you're going to place these arrows. So we can go this way here. And we're going to place those arrows right at that edge. Now, you do not have to worry about if the fabrics are touching right sides together or if the fabrics are touching wrong sides together. It just has to be facing each other. So either right sides together or wrong sides together, but they just have to be folded in half. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that one piece out. All right, it looks like our front is also on the fold, so I'm gonna cut that up. Okay, so now the sleeve is cut two on the main, so you're just facing them either right sides together or wrong sides together and cutting all the way around. I like to make sure to make the little notches where the top is and where the backs are. Uh, so that way I have that marked for when I sew it together. Okay, the little yokes also have a fold here. So we're going to cut on the fold. All right, and then we're going to cut two of these with some interfacing as well. Now all my pieces are cut out and ready to sew. All right, let's get started. First of all, we're gonna grab our front bodice piece and we're gonna work on our darts. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and cut out the dart. So that way it's easier for me to see where it's at. And then I like to trace it onto my piece. Place it right on top. And as you can see right here is where the dart's gonna be. So I'm using a water soluble marker and I'm tracing the dart. Now, the way that I like to do darts is I like to grab from the bottom, go in with a pin and then come out to the top line where the dart is. And then I fold it Grab in here, pinch in here at the top. And then I'm gonna go from uh, like a little bit farther down with my pin and come out right on my line here on the other side. So it's right here, right over this one side. And you can see that the pin is following the line where I marked my dart. I'm gonna do the same a little bit farther down. So then now when I go sew it, it's folded correctly all the way down. We're going to start here at the end and sew with a straight stitch. When we get closer to the end, we're going to make the straight stitch a little bit shorter and go off the edge. And we're going to do that for both sides. All right, let's go sew that up. Once we've sewn that, we're going to open up this stitch here at the bottom and do a little knot that is going to keep it from coming apart later um, and then we'll just clip it. Now don't tie it too tight so that it's going to make a ripple 
you just want to tie it so it's not going to come apart all right so once you've done that we're going to go in with that iron and we're going to steam that um all right so once you've done that we're going to go in with the iron and steam that dart up and down just lay it nice and flat so it's good right there you see barely see it and it just gives you a little bit of extra here takes pinching away the side so that way it fits nicely at the bust all right now we're going to grab our back bodice and our front bodice and we're going to place them right sides together at the shoulders and the side seams I'm going to be sewing with a straight stitch on my sewing machine and then I'm going to go do my serger and finish off that raw edge so that way it's nice and finished. While I'm at it, I'm probably also going to, I think I'm going to push my dart. I'm, actually, I think I'm going to push my dart towards the top. I'm also, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and uh raw my raw edge i'm going to serge it so that way it gives me a finished raw edge and then when i hem it'll just be easy so now we're going to go over to our sew machine sew our sides and our shoulders while i'm at it i'm also going to grab my sleeves and i'm going to prep them by sewing them right sides together at the short raw edge and then on the pattern you have markings for where to gather um, there's like little stars and we're going to put in a gathering stitch at the top of the sleeve. We're going to gather that sleeve in to fit into our, to our bodice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in two long basting stitches. Well, no, just one because this is thin fabric. So I think one long basting stitch will be enough. Um, and then I'm going to pull on the bobbin thread and I'm going to gather this sleeve to fit into my shoulder into my arm side over there on my shirt when I get to doing that. Another thing that I haven't done that I need to do is to add my interfacing to my um, neck. Well, this is my uh, front facing. So we're gonna add the interfacing to it. My front and back facing. All I do is I just place it right on top. This is a uh, this is a uh what is it called uh fusible all i do is place my fusible interfacing right on top of my the wrong side of my uh facing and then i just steam it on this gives that facing some a little bit of structure so it's more structured and it just fits better when you do it All right, once my interfacing has been adding to, added to my facing, I'm going to place my front facing right side up and then my back facing right sides on top and sew those shoulder seams right sides together. And after I sew the shoulder seams right sides together, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the raw edge of the facing. So I'm going to open it up and finish all the way around the outer edge with my serger so that that, it, that facing is finished so that we can sew the inside and the outer, we don't have to worry about it fraying afterwards. I'm gonna go ahead and do all those steps and come back and put it all together. We're almost done. I'm gonna lengthen that stitch. And I'm going to put in a long stitch here at the top of the cap of the sleeve to gather to fit my arm side. Now I'm coming to my serger to finish the raw edges. You know what? I'm also going to finish the raw edge of my sleeve. That way I can fold over and create that casing for the elastic and the edge will be finished off of it. I'm also going to finish the raw edge of my, the bottom of my shirt. Alrighty, so I've got my blouse here and it's been sewn. Now, on this pattern, they sewed the sides first, 
but I actually like to do this part before sewing the sides and I didn't even think about it before I did, but that's okay. I like to go ahead and place this on here, the facing to the neck. Um, I like to do it, the reason why I like to do it before I sew the sides is because before I sew the sides, I can open up and lay out my fabric, my, my blouse, so it's open and it's easier to kind of put this on here but it's kind of easier to sew it up but doing it this way works just fine as well because i am just matching that facing to the neck of my bodice right sides together and then i'm going to go to my sewing machine and sew it on okay so we're going to go down get to the corner turn and go over get to the turn corner turn go all the way around do the same on the back so you got to make sure that they're all matching right sides together, nice and neat. Here in the corner, I usually like to use a pin and kind of pin it in. So that way, it's, even though I've removed the clip, I still have this pin here that helps me stabilize that corner so that it's nice and straight. So that you have that nice square neck again that's the reason why i like to do it before i sew the sides because it's easier to get a better feel so when you're sewing this up it might be easier honestly to do this step before you sew the side seams i didn't even think about it until now and i'm just like oh, no. but this is going to be just fine because um this works just as well it's just that the other way is a little bit easier All right, so that's ready. Now, if you wanna to proceed to the next step, it will be to set your sleeves inset here. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just sew up the neckline and come back and do the inset sleeves and get them prepped for hemming. You know what, let me prep them for hemming first and then we'll inset them. So I'm gonna do that by folding that raw edge, that bottom raw edge up. Because I already surged the edge, um, I'm just going to fold it up and then I'm going to be leaving, once I sew it on, I'm gonna leave a gap where I'm going to insert my elastic uh, to go around the whole bottom of the sleeve. So I'm gonna basically hem it like I would. Um, if you wanna do a double fold, you could do like a quarter inch and a quarter inch double fold. I'm just doing, because I already finished my raw edge, I'm just doing the one fold and um, leaving a gap, like a inch to two inch gap where I'm going to insert my elastic. So my sleeve will be prepped for hemming. That way I can do it all at one time because that's what I like to do. Comment below if there's a pattern that you found that it's a free pattern and you're like, oh, I'm having a hard time with the instructions. I would love for you to try it out and sew it up. Or if there's something that you're like, oh, I've been hoping that you would make, you know, this kind of pattern or whatever, or there's any like sewing tips and tricks or anything like that you're like oh i wish you would do a video on this comment below and let me know because i'm always looking for ideas i'm also going to prep the hem of the shirt so that way i can go ahead and hem it once i'm over there on the sewing machine i'm always looking for um ideas for another video and sometimes the main reason why i don't upload a lot of times is because i'm just like i don't know what to do i kind of draw a blank on what to do and what you all want to see so any ideas of what you want to see let me know and then if it's something that i'm like oh i can do that i can go ahead and and do a video on it but also if you are interested in following along with what i do on a daily i am on instagram and i do go on instagram every day on my stories basically so come join me there all right, so now I am going to go ahead and grab my sleeve and fit it in there because if we do that, then we'll basically be done with our top. As you can see, I marked my sleeve here as the back. So I'm going to fit that towards the back. I'm gonna clip my um, bottom seam, my armpit area. And then I'm also gonna clip the top where I marked the top at the seam. Our sleeve has a marking on it. I'm going to start clipping here at the edge and where my gathering starts, where my mark is to start gathering, I'm gonna pull on that basting stitch and gather this sleeve to fit into my arm side. 
So we're gonna gather on this side, I'm gonna pull on it and make it fit all the way on this side. Even it out. So a little bit more. And then make sure it's nice and even here at the raw edges. I'm gonna go to my sewing machine, sew it on, and then I'm gonna go to my serger and finish off the raw edges. I'm gonna do that on the front and the back and on both sleeves. All right, I'm gonna go sew the neckline, sew the shoulder, I mean the sleeve in, hem and hem. Here's my pen, which is guiding me to where I'm gonna stop, remove my pen, lift up my foot, but not my needle, and then we're gonna turn and go the other way and do the same on each corner. All right, here at the corner, we're gonna trim up until the thread. Don't cut the thread, just up to the thread. And then we're gonna go to my serger and finish off the raw edges. Or, really on this one, we're going to edge stitch, so we don't really have to, but just make sure that you go all the way to the edge. So that way, when you turn it around, it gives you a really nice, crisp, square neck. If you don't do this, then it won't be a crisp, square neck. All right, let's attach our sleeves and hem. Remember to leave a gap when you're hemming the sleeve to insert the elastic. Finishing the sleeves. All right, I'm sure you noticed that I did not finish the raw edge of the outer of the outer um, of my facing, so I'm gonna do that now. Y'all, we are almost done. The last thing to do is to turn over your facing, and then you're going to edge stitch your facing, under stitch your facing, I'm sorry. What that means is we're going to stitch this lining to the facing. So we're gonna stitch it down here. But what I wanna do first is I'm gonna steam it to make sure that everything looks good, that all my corners look good. And then I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and edge stitch it. So I'm gonna stitch, I mean, um, steam all my corners. Look at how nice that neckline looks. Now, if you wanted to, you could just go in there and top stitch from the outer edge, but then you'll see the top stitching. But the best way to do it is to go underneath and stitch that seam allowance to the actual facing. I think what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go in and do a top stitching stitch instead of all the way around from the outside because I think it still will look really nice on the sleeve. All right, the last step after I top stitch will be to insert this elastic through the gap I left at the hem of the sleeve all the way around Ow. The heck, it came open. Poked me. Let's try it again. Okay, and then when we get here, we're gonna sew it together, zigzag stitch it together, and then close off that gap. And then that's it. So let's go ahead and finish up. Can't wait to try it on. I think it's gonna be adorable. Make sure you close that gap. Last step, I'm going to go ahead and top stitch my neckline. All 
What did you think of the tutorial and what do you think about this pattern? I think I was so spot on doing the size up. Um, so when I measured in the chart, I fit somewhere between the two sizes and I went with the one that was up uh, instead of going to the lower size. Um, and I love, 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 love the fit. It fits great through the chest. It flares out a little bit. The sleeves for, fit perfectly at my shoulder. So that's a great, great fit. Um, everything fit really, really well. Next time though, I probably will elongate the, the shirt out down a little bit because this is like a cropped fit. It fits right at high hip, um, which is great with these high-waisted pants. But if I was going to wear lower pants, I would like it to be a little bit low, longer. Um, other than that, it's perfect. Perfect. I have zero complaints about this top. The fit is amazing. The instructions are easy to follow, especially if you already know how to sew and if you follow my tutorial. Um, and I think it turned out super cute. What do you think? Comment below and let me know what you think. Let me know if you're going to go download this pattern and sew it up with me. Come follow me on Instagram. And if you do sew up this blouse, please go ahead and tag me because I'd love to see it. And I'd love to know that you use my tutorial to sew it up. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't so you never miss any of my tutorials. I hope to see you again soon and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!